Uh, so hi, my name is Charlotte Paulin, I'm a haematologist from the Royal Marsden Hospital in London and the Institute of Cancer Research. So I've just spoken at the first session of the Myeloma Patients Europe Masterclass. Um, the, most of my talk was about updates in multiple myeloma therapy. So we went through updates both for newly diagnosed patients, uh, relapsed patients, and then a large portion of my talk was about new immunotherapeutic approaches. Uh, so I talked about the um, new antibody-based approaches um, and all the different kinds of uh, antibody-based approaches and all the different targets that these approaches can uh, look for in terms of the surface marker on the myeloma cell that they're targeted against. So I talked about antibody drug conjugates, so drugs like belantamab, mafodotin, and then I talked about uh, bispecific antibodies um, and the two uh, m uh, drugs that we have most data about. So I talked a little bit about teclistamab um, and alronatumab data that's been presented in recent congresses. Uh, and then I went on to speak about the CAR T cell therapies, uh, so focusing particularly on Idacel and Siltacel with updates uh, from the recent congresses about uh, results from trials using these agents. And so I think what's really exciting what came out in the discussions with uh, patients and questions from patients afterwards is kind of how many different uh, drugs there are, how many different targets there are against, and how we are looking to use these drugs not only for patients with a very relapsed refractory disease, which is where most of them have been studied so far, but also looking at these drugs in earlier lines of therapy in combinations with other drugs. And so because we see really great response rates, even in patients with relapsed refractory disease, we hope that by moving them to earlier lines of therapy, we'll see even longer and deeper remissions uh, for patients at those stages. About the results from their DREAM2 trial, which showed that approximately one third of patients who were treated with belantamab mafodotin um, showed a response to uh, the drug. And these are patients who've got really relapsed refractory disease and have become resistant to therapy with lots of other medications. Um, I talked a little bit about some of the side effects that we see with this drug. So this is not only side effects that we're used to, so some effects on blood counts like low platelet counts, but also a new side effect uh, called corneal keratopathy, which is where the drug can cause um, changes to the surface of the eye, which can cause uh, irritable eye, dry eyes, and sometimes change visual acuity or affect how um, easy it is for a patient to, to see, perhaps to watch television. Um, but these, these changes that really affect, those things occur in a, a small percentage of patients and we're learning more as we get more and more experience with the drug how to space the drug and lower the dose to try and prevent that from happening. I went on uh, to talk about some of the bispecific antibodies and um, the really excellent response rates that we're seeing in the initial trials of these drugs. So with uh, around more than two thirds of patients are responding to drugs. Again, these are patients who've had lots of prior lines of therapy and have become uh, very resistant, perhaps refractory to multiple different uh, therapies already. Uh, so this is really encouraging data and really, really great response rates that we're seeing um, at this stage of the disease. Um, I talked a little about, bit about some of the side effects of these therapies, so um, the effect on the immune system that potentially uh, means we need to watch out for infections in these patients, um, and then also the risk when we first administer the drug of causing something called cytokine release syndrome, which is essentially an overactivation of the immune system. We're trying to activate the immune system to target the myeloma cell, but if that um, activates too much, then that can cause some side effects for patients. And so at the moment, these drugs are mostly administered in hospital to start with so that we can act quickly to minimize that the, the, the cytokine release syndrome and prevent it from uh, causing further problems. I talked then about CAR T therapy and the really exciting response rates we're seeing from the initial trials. Again, more than two thirds of patients responding up to almost all patients in the CARTITUDE 1 trial in which we saw uh, uh, resp responding. Um, again, the, these CAR T therapies can be associated with cytokine release syndrome. That's something that we monitor patients closely for. Um, potentially the rates of cytokine release are a little higher with the CAR T therapies. And so we're monitoring very closely for that, administering these in hospital so that we can administer therapies to modulate cytokine release syndrome if it occurs.